All right, let's now look at this problem of taking partial derivatives when this function over here is an abstract function. We may not know the form of f and find out now the second order derivatives with respect to r and t. And the idea is still the same because now u is a function of x and y, right? And x is a function of r and t. So x y now considered intermediate variables and we want to take the derivative of these second order ones. And it helps if we actually write down the first order derivatives of x and y, these intermediate variables with respect to r and t. We've done this calculation before, so let's try it again. So take the derivative with respect to r for x, and then this is going to be simply cosine t because t is considered as constant and takes the derivative with respect to r, and this is going to be sine t, right? And then let's look at the second kind of derivative with respect to t over here. Now, we need to take the derivative of cosine t and negative this, and r sine t. And then we take the derivative with respect to t for y we have over here simply r and cosine t. Okay. Now, let's try the first one over here. Of course, we need to have the first derivative first, so we write down what's going to be the derivative of u respect to r. And according to the chain rule, that's going to be the derivative respect to x and then the derivative x respect to r, and the derivative of f respect to y, and the derivative of y with respect to r. Okay. And you may think why we use f over here, we don't use u. It's just for convenience. Sometimes it's helpful if we use another symbol for the function over here. And then plug in the values we have already here, and then this is what we have. So we have derivative of f respect to x, and then we have cosine t, and plus the derivative of f and respect to y, and we have sine t. And that's really nice because it's not too complicated. But look at the second order derivative and over here. So we take the second derivative respect to r, and that's going to be the second derivative respect to r of this entire thing. We have partial derivative of x and cosine t and plus the derivative respect to y and sine t. Now when we do that, we need to pay attention to these two derivatives. Because f is a function of x, y, f detects derivative, these two derivatives, they are still functions of x and y. And then x is again partial, is, is function of r and t, and y is a function of r and t. The same situation, if you look at the second function over here, this is a function of x and y, and then you have again these intermediate fun variables, they are function of x, s, and t. No, r and t. Okay. And so when we take the derivative over here, if we write down the derivative, when we take derivative respect to r, cosine t is a constant. So this is what we have. So it's going to be cosine t. And this one over here, we have to apply the chain rule like this kind. And this is what we have. We have second order derivative respect to x because we are taking derivative respect to x over here, and then the derivative of x respect to r. And then this is what we have. We have mixed derivative now respect to y and x, and then derivative y respect to r. Okay. So this part comes from the derivative of this one with respect to r. And similarly, for the second part, t is a constant, so we pull it out. And then the derivative of this one consists of two terms. This is what we have. Take the derivative with respect to x. First, we have x and y, the mixed order, second order derivative. And then x respect to r. And then plus 
the derivative respect to y, and this is what we have, and the y over here, dr. And then we plug in these derivatives again. This is what we have. So we have over here cosine square t and second order derivative respect to x and plus sine square t and second order derivative respect to y and the mixed one. The mixed derivatives are the same. In fact, as long as f is a good function. So we can actually combine this term and this term together, and then this is what we have. We have twice sine t and cosine t, and second order derivative is mixed, x and y. So what we are saying that over here is that the second order partial derivatives, mixed type, are the same as long as f is a good function. Normally we say twice differentiable and the derivatives are continuous. So these are the ones we have. We have a second order derivative. Okay. Now let's look at the second order derivative respect to t to see if we have the similar kind of calculation. And the first one is almost the same. So we take the derivative respect to time t now, not real time t, variable t. All right, and this is what we can have. We have the partial derivative of f respect to x, and then x respect to t. But we have calculated this. f over here respect to y, and y respect to t. So using the formulas we have over here, and this is going to be negative r and sine t, and then this partial derivative respect to x, and the partial derivative of y with respect to t is r cosine t, and this is what we have. Now, when we take the second order derivative, we want to take the second order derivative respect to t over here, we have a slightly different situation. Sine t and cosine t, in the previous calculation, they were considered as constants, so they, pull, they are pulled out. But here, now we are taking derivative respect to t, so sine t and cosine t are no longer constants. r over here is constant. And then we have two products over here, and we need to apply product rule. So let's apply the product rule carefully, and this is what we have. So negative r pulled out, and then it's going to be product rule. Let's do it first sine derivative is going to be cosine t, and times the derivative over here is unchanged. But second part is sine t, and the derivative over here, we have the, this derivative over here with respect to t. This is what we have. Okay. And then add, again, the derivative of cosine is negative sine t, and then copy the second factor, and then plus cosine t, and here is the derivative of f respect to y over here. Now that's still the same situation. These two functions over here and over here, we need to use chain rule. So this is what we have if we use the chain rule, this is going to be negative r cosine t. This is unchanged. But the second part, let me multiply negative r through. So this is going to be negative r and sine t. Let me use the chain rule over here. So this is going to be derivative respect to x now twice, and the derivative of x respect to t and then this is the mixed derivative, and then we have y derivative respect to t over here. Um, for the second part, we copy this term, and this is what we have, and we put r and cosine t over here, 
and inside this one again let's expand it and then this is going to be derivative mixed and then derivative x respect to t and plus the derivative respect to y twice and then we have y derivative respect to t so that's what we have and then we are almost at the end of the calculation we just need to be careful when we multiply these things out and this is what we have we have negative r let's put these two terms together so this is what we have we have cosine t derivative respect to x and plus sine t derivative over here respect to y and then let's look at second order derivative okay so derivative of x respect to t is negative r sine t so now we have two of them so we have plus r squared and sine squared t and second order derivative respect to x over here and then this term we already have it. Let's, let's look at the second order derivative respect to y. We have r cosine t and another r cosine t over here. So we have r cosine squared t over here and the second order derivative and y squared. If we look at the mixed term over here, we have the negative sign and we have two of them. So it's negative. We still have r squared, but we have two sine t and cosine t and then we have second order derivative and that's what we have for the second order derivative of u with respect to t all right